Hi, yogis. Welcome to Yogi's Book Club. This is my second episode. The first one was on yoga mythology, so make sure you check that out. Today we will be talking about holistic healing. So I have three books for you. They are great resources for holistic healing and just understanding the emotional aspect behind ailments and anything that could be bothering you. Only one of the books is meant for a yogi audience, but all three fit seamlessly with the yogi lifestyle and are definitely great resources. So the first one we're going to talk about is written by Dr. Northrup. It's called Women's Body, Women's Wisdom. And if you don't read any other book I recommend, like this is the one that you need to read. It's very long, so it's definitely a book that will be on your coffee table for at least a few months. But that's just because it's so comprehensive and such a great resource. This is a very popular holistic medical guide for women. The author is a medical doctor, like I said, and she seamlessly combines traditional and alternative medicines for her patients, many of which are provided as case studies in this book. I would describe her as a radical feminist that has taught me how to appreciate the power women hold biologically. It authoritatively and compassionately guides readers through an A to Z list of women's conditions from fibroids, menstruation, vaginitis, to cancer, hysterectomy, and menopause. It's a great read cover to cover if you have a broad interest in women's health like I do, but it also can be used to selectively read about certain health concerns relevant to you, the reader. Like I said, this is a comprehensive Bible to women's health. Cannot recommend it enough. Literally the only, it's not a negative because it's necessary, but the only deterring factor from reading this book is the length of it. But it's amazing, five out of five stars, a great resource. This one leads seamlessly into my next book because this is also a doctor who actually collaborates with Dr. Northrup quite often. So this book is completely different. I don't think it's essential. I don't think it will teach you a, a tremendous amount of just knowledge from Western and Eastern worlds like this Women's Body, Women's Wisdom, but it's just a super interesting book. So Dr. Miss is a medical intuitive, which means that based on your name and age, she feels like she can get images on your health and see things like cancer that was undetected, like problems that you are having physically and mentally, she gets images that then she can share with you and help you heal that way. So it's an out there and very unique field um, and it's just an interesting perspective whether you believe it or not like it's interesting to hear what she has to say um, it's definitely not too loony when you hear it in her words so it's like it's worth a shot to just broaden your horizons a little bit so like I said she's a medical intuitive she has a very creative view on chakras and religion so it's really interesting she attempts to unite all people, regardless of religion, and say we are all on the same type of spiritual path, regardless of which organized religion you prescribe to, or even if you don't follow any religion like me. She synthesizes the ancient wisdom of three spiritual traditions, the Hindu chakras, the Christian sacraments, and the Judaism tree of life to demonstrate the seven stages through which everyone must pass in the search for higher consciousness. So after she attempts to blend the lines between all these models, she goes through the seven centers in a similar way to any other book on the chakras. She talks about the physical and the emotional aspects of each chakra and gives examples of diseases of the chakras from her own case studies and also from history. I had never heard about these chakra ailments in history like the AIDS epidemic um, before this book. So that was really interesting to hear. It's definitely an unconventional perspective, but it is an amazing source to just 
learn a little bit more about the chakras. It's definitely not a primary source. It's not like this is the first book you should ever read on chakras. I don't think just because it's a little bit convoluted the way she tries to blend um, different region religions together. But as just an additional source, it's really interesting. I've never heard of anything like this before. And it's just a really cool goal. Like even if the religions don't fit together seamlessly, it's really cool that she tried to do this and she tried to unite us all um, based on her background in religious studies. So like I said, the downside, it's that it's a little bit unbelievable. It is a little bit stretching with all religions being very, very similar. I'm not sure I buy into that, but it's really interesting. I really enjoyed it. So I do recommend this book as well, Anatomy of the Spirit. All these um, books will be linked below if you want to check them out. The last book we are going to look at is called Yoga as Medicine. So out of the three books, this is the only one that was designed with yogis in mind, obviously. Um, this was written by Dr. McCall. And this book is very informational and inspiring by providing statistics and research studies to back yoga. The author is a medical doctor who gave up his practice in favor of yoga and is now the medical editor at Yoga Journal. A large intersection explains the basics of asana and pranayama for health. He walks through general beliefs, the different types of yoga, Ayurvedic medicine and doshas, all of which is a bit slow if you already know the basics, but it's very thorough if you're a complete novice. Then he dedicates chapters to specific diseases and maladies. Examples include MS, back pain, infertility, AIDS. So it really covers a wide spectrum. Each of these chapters includes a case study, a description of the ailment, a really brief intro to how Western and Eastern medicine handle the disease, and then relevant research studies on the benefits of yoga specific to that ailment, a restorative or gentle yoga practice designed for the ailment, complete with justification for why the pose is there. And um, that's all provided by an expert yogi in the specific field that that chapter is dealing with. So that's great. So that was all really good. I haven't read any book like this where it literally goes through different ailments and tries to design an asana practice for it because he is part of Yoga Journal, a major editor. He has some great yogi experts coming in to help him with every chapter. So that's great. They're really authoritative views on the illnesses. There are, I do have a few complaints about this one. This is the one that I can't fully recommend. I did read it cover to cover, but it was actually hard to like finish all the way through because a few things just irked me. So even though it includes a lot of research studies, my issue was they weren't that great of research studies all the time. He basically summarizes the findings in these of these research studies in a sentence or two. There are no graphs. There's, I'm an engineer, that's my background, so I would have liked to see more of that in the book, um, especially since he's quoting studies so frequently. Um, but beyond that, he actually wrote, as part of one of the research studies, the yoga group had improved pain readings, but the levels were not statistically significant. To me, I'm like, if it's not statistically significant, why put it in the book? Like, there should be more vetting in the research studies. That's kind of what I just saw overall. I think that, um, yeah, like, I think he, the author was trying a little bit too hard to include as many studies as he could instead of really vetting them and choosing which ones are meaningful enough to put in the book. So if you aren't from the stats world and don't know what um, statistically significant means, it means that there was a control group and there was a yoga group. The yoga group did the asana practice, the control group did nothing, and the resulting pain factor was very, very similar between the two. So even the 
though the yoga group was slightly better, it was so slight that it's within the normal range of like just randomness. So it shouldn't be quoted in any reputable source. I mean, it is good that he included like statistically significant in that sentence. Like he didn't just try to pass it off and not say anything about it. But like I said, anything that's statistically insignificant should not be included in a book as a like good research study. The second issue I had with the book, um, you know, let's see when this book was written actually. So the book was written in 2007. So I know the heroin epidemic, the opioid epidemic, is it's getting larger and larger in recent years. So he said that opioids and narcotics are under-prescribed because of an irrational fear of addiction. Like I read that and I was like, especially since later he condemns the use of melatonin and peppermint essential oil, saying they don't have enough research backing to ensure safety. So I think, I don't know, he tried to be a holistic, he didn't come at the study of medicine from a really neutral, non-judgmental background. I think he just had his medical background in his mind and what worked in his doctor practice, he kind of pushed a little bit too hard in the book. Because I can't really condone any book that says, that opioids are under prescribed. That's just not what I'm about. So this is the one book that I don't really recommend. Um, let me know what you think. If you weren't bothered by those things or you have a counter argument for why it's okay that he you know, said those things about the opioid dem epidemic and peppermint oil and melatonin being worse than that, like let me know that too. But again, just to summarize, this book, um, it's okay, it's not the worst book I ever read. And then these two books, Women's Body, Women's Wisdom, Anatomy, Anatomy of Spirit, I do recommend this one, like biggest endorsement ever. Um, so yeah, those are the books that we reviewed. Let me know if you have any books that I should check out. Check out these books in the description below and I'll join you soon with the next episode of Yogi's Book Club. I have been reading a lot more yoga books now that it's summer and the weather's wonderful. I definitely always read more in the summer when I can like read outside. Um, so I do have some yoga books that I'm like waiting to read right now, now that I've finished this batch. Um, so I'll definitely be back. I hope you have an amazing day um, and namaste. Thanks for joining me.